No, it would be great. I mean, that's kind of what's, what's great about coming here to the phenomenal podcast, the Heads of Podcast Studios. You can look at that one. Oh, this one. Okay, okay. And I'll look at this one. Uh, well, actually, don't look at them. Wow. Yeah, this is an organic conversation with me. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. But let's keep the chat. I'm enjoying. We okay. were talking there before the, these were rolling. It feels different now, doesn't it, now that we're in? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get my voice about three octaves lower. About yeah. having a... a I want to... Sound the same as you, so yeah, as you were saying. That's gonna be very confusing for the audio listener because you yeah. sound exactly like me. I sound like you. Uh, <laughs> well, wow. like, I'm from Marino, and I, I no, which uh, my favorite chip is the chicken chop. Yeah, that's really that good. You? Yeah, <laughs> I love that. I sound like The Witcher. <laughs> that's very cool. What's your current setup now? That where you make things. What's your current mecca, the home? Mm. Where does the genius mind of Killian Sunderman create his content right now? Well, there's. Uh, you were saying before we were recording the importance of having a little nook. A little nook. And um, we <laughs> recently in my house got rid of a desk and th that's given me a very small little corner, about a meter squared, in mm. which I can set up a green screen mm -hmm. and uh, I put a chair down and then I cover the chair in green screen and I sit on that and that's where I'm doing my stuff at the moment. It looks great. I Does it? I it don't know. Really I'm experimenting good. at the moment. I'm trying to do... It looks better than stuff. Instagram. Yeah. And Instagram is very good green screen. Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, the TikTok Instagram green screen is, I mean, a lot of times I was doing it and I was like, is this worth it? Is it worth mm -hmm. it? Uh, but like just having, being able to move, have two people in the screen at the same time mm -hmm. and like, you know, create all the different backdrops and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be good. It's endless possibilities. Who knows? But I'm, I'm messing around with that at the minute. So. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. <laughs> now, I I think you ha you you're a bit more of a dynamo than I am, because um, as you said, you were talking about like hyper focus. Because I remember when I started messing with green screens uh, back in fucking 2019. I'm a bit of an old dog at this. Um, I was thinking to myself, this is amazing. Like I'm going, I'm gonna make a Lord of the Rings. <laughs> like, I'm gonna fucking just make a Lord of the Rings with this, and I don't care how bad it looks. But I'm gonna do a two hour epic with mm. this. And then I was like. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> won't even do a chicken chop <laughs> you know because Hugh Cooney made uh, a kind of an epic green screen movie did he a full feature movie I never saw on green that. screen he was he was kind of like um, showing it in pubs and stuff like that okay but he's like that he That's makes like you. he yeah. makes like art yeah and then he'll just like be finished with his art and kind of be like I made a bit of art <laughs> you know I, I want to like I need you to see me now and I want to wring it dry <laughs> yeah. to the last yeah. Like today, I just posted. I made an ad for a drinks company that shall remain unnamed. Wow! And uh, I sent it to them. And I loved it. They absolutely hated it. Really? And um, they were like, "That cannot, uh, that can't like make it again," kind of thing, which is sometimes happens. Yes. Uh, but they were like, "Make it again." But I thought it was very funny, and so I um, so I'm trying to like, I'm in this new era now where I'm like trying to sell tickets, uh, mm. which is a whole new thing mm -hmm. uh, that I actually might be asking you for advice about. But sure. Like. Uh, I was like, maybe I can use this little video I have because it's a fake stand-up. It's like, hey, you know, hey, my ex-wife, huh? Yeah, very She's cool. She's a total neck. Uh, that kind of thing. Whoa, hang on. Who is it? <laughs> Sorry, I feel like a New York gentleman just walked into this room right now a second ago. <laughs> but there's only you and me here. This is crazy. <laughs> but I, I, I use that, I use that video, and I just put like a little black box over the product so no one knows what it is oh nice. like i mean i want to i want to use all the things the idea of making like a, a big epic movie and then not even just shown in a few pubs and then going all right <laughs> yes yeah that's it served true its purpose <laughs> <on> <laughs> art, in the art world no no yeah i can't do that i tried to reuse something i did as well i, I did a um a thing for a i can't say hmm. a brand of crisp <laughs> I've already given it away, <laughs> <laughs> and they had some kind of um, slogan in their kind of a, in their kind of company rhetoric, mm. and they're like, "Our brand is, you know, the rebel spirit, you know, the warrior, you okay. know, poet, <laughs> or whatever it was." And I used verbatim everything that they because they came back with a counter to one of my ads, mm. and they were like, "No, it's kind of more about this, you know," yeah. and I used literally all of that kind of the warrior rebel spirit of yeah. crisp you know and they were like can you please not use our exact copy <laughs> <laughs> and I, I kind of pushed back on it because I was in a bratty mood sometimes yeah. sometimes you just be in a bratty mood mm. as Throw I told toys you out of the pram yeah yeah and you also find that uh, and it's probably not but it does like sometimes it works like, yeah you become a brat and they kind of go oh okay and you can you can throw that sometimes but imagine you got very used to it mm. You mm. become totally insufferable. That's what's awful about kind of because with us having kind of agents and stuff like that, mm. there is a kind of a, a middle person mm. for you to say the most wild thing. Yeah. Because that's kind of like the bumpers are up. 
they are the bumpers. So you could be like, no fucking way. I'm not working with that. <laughs> you yeah. know, like, I don't want to do that. You know, or you could uh, the most outlandish. Can I arrive at 6 p.m.? Even though it starts at 9 a.m.? I'll ask. And then they'll have to say it in a nice way, you know? Do they know who I am? Do they even know who I am? <laughs> when they ask you to do something, you go, this is insulting. For them to ask me this yeah. is insulting. They mm -hmm. don't know who I am. Mm -hmm. They didn't even, or you go to a thing and maybe there's a person picking you up. It's like, hi, what's your name? And you're like, they don't know who I am. <laughs> they didn't. How was it? They didn't know who I was. Yeah. <laughs> as if know who I everyone was. is supposed to know you. <laughs> so I've been doing this for less than two years. <laughs> this is <laughs> bullshit. You know? But it's mad how Be just careful. you can kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's mad how you can just kind of. Um, I mean, I d obviously we're exaggerating you, and we're nice. Yeah. We're nice people, and oh, this, yeah, we don't, we don't say, <laughs> we don't say, no. because I think you, sometimes you can get carried away and think like, oh no, you know, you get someone comes back and say, no, this isn't kind of what we're looking for, mm. you know, and you can kind of convince yourself for a second, oh, but I kind of am an artist, so this ad is actually art, <laughs> 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 and then you kind of get in your head. But then it's like, sorry, I'm I'm actually going to live and die by this thing I just came up with half an hour ago. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah. idea, uh, which was the first idea I had. Yeah. I'm going to die. I will fucking die on this hill for this idea I just came up with. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it is funny how it works with that. Like, uh, ideas that you kind of frivolously come up that are also based around, like, an ad launch. Like, mm -hmm. it's using their kind of language and stuff like that. And you're kind of like, you're making something up that is very, like, limited already. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of give you the slightest feedback. And you're like, oh, no, I'm great with feedback. Yeah, what's the feedback? Yeah, that's <laughs> disgraceful. <laughs> okay, you're still, you're trying to silence me. You're trying to silence my creativity. Yeah, you yeah. don't get it. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, we're nice people. I just want to reiterate nice that. We're lovely. Uh, <laughs> it is mad. Like, because you're, how, how old are you again? I'm 29. You're 29. Yeah. You know, do you think that if um you know you had had the success that you have now if you had had that at, at like 19 mm. how do you think that would have affected you how how do you think i'd say i'd be i'd say i care about it a lot more mm -hmm. and uh I'd oh, say wow. i'd be like an awful person like sure um i think like i mean obviously everyone's different and stuff like that but i think me when i was 19 um you know, I would have just, it would have just like confirmed a lot of th like kind of s suspicions you have about yourself. You're like, maybe I'm brilliant. You know, yeah. when you're a teenager and you're kind of unbeatable and you're like, maybe I'm like, like a wonderful person. And suddenly like you're getting mm. this affirmed by, you know, numbers on a screen and you're like, oh wait, this is true. I am brilliant. I am fantastic. Yeah. Whereas, you know, if you've gone off and lived in the world and worked regular jobs and then, you know, something happens to you after that, mm -hmm. you're kind of a bit more like, okay, well, like I'm someone that something happened to. And, yes. Uh, and I've done work and it and it's worked out and that's, you know, that's who I am. I don't ascribe value to this thing that's happened to me. It doesn't make me someone S more. So if you're 19, like you're that. almost, you would have now 10 years of this calcifying, yeah. like I am exactly right. And you're trying to almost like linger on and hold on to this. Like, yeah. No, what was it about me being 19 that was exactly right that I need to stay exactly yeah. that way, you know? <laughs> Um, yeah. That's fascinating. Mm. But you're right, you probably would be working better at it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would be working better at it. But you know what I found recently, Killian? Mm. I find that my mind can get carried away with some th things that I was like, oh, should I be doing this and should I do that? And I have to just kind of be like, do you know what? For the output that I want, some things just have to be good enough, mm. you know? And yeah. be like, I'm just going to leave it at that. Do things <laughs> have to be uh, good every single time? No. Things no. It be okay. I uh, mean, it's <laughs> hard when you realize that not everything is good. And yeah. you like you put out like you know your third or fourth thing, and you're like, oh okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I look back on things that I was convinced were brilliant, mm. and then I go, oh no, yeah, I get why that didn't. Yes. Do I mean I'm terrible for, uh, like the TikTok shadow ban idea. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm constantly like, uh, and I say it in such a matter of fact, like my roommate Rory will come downstairs and he'll be like, how's that video you did doing? And I'm like, oh well, like TikTok are shadow banning, me, so it's, <laughs> obviously it's not going to do well because they're shadow banning me. Because, mm -hmm. it, like, you know, I made a video about the Queen, like, you know, a month ago. And I'm like, they haven't let it go. They haven't let it go. I'm a marked man. They won't, <laughs> they won't release it to the masses. Yeah. The masses are crying out for this video. Yeah. And they won't give it to them. <laughs> and they're, they're, you know, they're dry in the mouth. They're foaming at the mouth. They mm -hmm. want it. Um, but so I'm always saying, like, I'm being shadow banned and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you know. <laughs> there's, an easy, there's an easy way to be like, uh, I hear the weirdest thing. <laughs> like, it's, I, I, I'm not a big conspiracy nut. Mm. You know, be terrifying if I was an actual literal massive nut. But um, like I, I used to be, but then I kind of realized, oh, I'm actually not even reading the official story. Mm, yeah, <laughs> I'm only reading the contrarian <laughs> story. You know, <laughs> but I still have that in my head where I, I'm like, I get carried away and kind of make things up in my head. So like yesterday, my our internet, no, two days ago, our internet went. 
Hmm. And it was just gone, like gone, gone. Not even like oh. sketchy. And I was all like, I can't fucking, like, how can they do this? Like, I can't breathe. And Terry was all like, we can just tether to our phone. Like, all we were doing was watching Hacks, you know, <laughs> uh, that show. And uh, and I was tethered to my phone. But I was like, do you know what happened? Because actually what happened was I called them. And I was like, internet's acting a bit sketchy now. And they were like, oh, well, we'll send someone out, um, you know, next week to fix that. And as soon as I got off the phone, it just cut off. And I was like, what is going on here? And I went to Terry and I'm like, they're after cutting off our internet because they know that we know that it's, it's sketchy. Yeah. And they can get away because this fucking energy crisis that yeah. would not give us any internet. And mm. she was like, I don't know. <laughs> and then um, and then the guy came out and he was all like, oh, no, it's it's this. And he pointed at the, the different, because I put in a different wire mm. so that I could extend it. Mm-hmm. But it's also extended through the house through two closed doors, closing <laughs> the wire that are all frayed. And he's like, what is this shitty wire? What is this shit? I just changed your wire. What the fuck? And I was like, no, it was totally my fault. Government. It was totally, it was to the government you shutting down. the wire is what you're telling me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, but they tried to like shut down my communication. The, uh, the New York Times bought Wordle. Yeah. And everyone was like, what dictionary are they using this from? The ancient dictionary of <laughs> <Yeah>. Ipsos? <laughs> what? Is this only Greek words now? Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. It's like, that, like they did an analysis and it was using the completely same word generator. Mm-hmm. I was convinced. Yeah. Since the New York Times got it, oh, it's gone to shit. It's gone to shit. Uh, when I when I broke when I words. forgot and I broke my streak of not doing it, mm. I was all like, "Oh, forget that." Yeah, I'm not doing <laughs> I know. It. Yeah, yeah. I did it the other day. It is actually a mildly fun game. Mm. But the second I started saying with "be real," like doing "be real" all the time, I was like, "Anna, do you think it's a fad?" Or do you? she's like, "Fad, that'll be gone. That'll be gone very soon." Be real is here to stay. Oh no, I don't know. <laughs> but you remember that one that was like, I was literally on this podcast talking about. You know the one that was like. Um, it was like you you could do like voice messages, like live voice podcasting. I don't even know the oh, name of it that now. That was a thing for a while. That was a big it? thing. Yeah. Everyone was talking about it. I couldn't even tell you the name of it now. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to look me. I'm going to be doing a full time show on that. This is the new thing. <laughs> yeah. Because I was kind of convinced that like, mm. like listening to live podcasts, mm. how is that not a thing? But it just it's hasn't. Just, that's radio. Yeah. Yeah. The radio. That's okay. <laughs> okay, here's another idea. Jurassic Park, but we're animals. <laughs> <laughs> this is a zoo. <laughs> yeah, but I was kind of convinced. And also, like, what was the other one? Like, v- Vero, which was, like, Instagram. And it was just essentially Instagram, but the whole thing, it was all in chronological order. That was the only thing. I'm pretty sure that's a setting you have on Instagram. I know, but it's on an automatic setting. You have to go in and, and select yeah. it. I think Be Real is here to stay. You do? Yeah. It's nice because it's friend. I think, like, um, I don't know, when you have... Uh, I don't have one of those Finstas or anything like that. Mm. So when you ha- when your social media is essentially... I mean, it's not... I don't your view it as tool. work, but it's, like, a thing that you use to, uh, you know, showcase your art or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's not really... You, can't, you don't really interact with friends in the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, so Be Real is, like, exclusively just people I know. Yeah. I mean, I, say, I follow, like, maybe five people... You and Shane are like the main ones, and then there's yeah. a few other people. I'm um, cutthroat with my be real. I am cutthroat. Yeah, yeah. With, Keep the I'm, circle small. I'm very selective. I'm like kind of the. I mean, the Louvre is massive, or maybe. <laughs> the I don't know. I'm just. I'm like the largest art collection <laughs> in the world, but it's well curated. <laughs> no, I'm kind of like. What's a good small art gallery? Uh, what's the one? The the the. The one next to the doll, there's one on the doll. The Molesworth? Emma? In Molesworth? Molesworth? Molesworth. Emma's too big. Molesworth. Okay, Molesworth. Not even yeah. been in there. Yeah. See, he's a classy guy. That's it. Molesworth. You know, I'm kind of like Molesworth. Yeah. I remember my dad, <laughs> my dad used to buy art. He'd be in a black rock and he'd like go in and buy like, you know, some oil painting of, I don't know, a big sexy woman or something like that. Mm-hmm. And we'd go into these art places. And I remember we were at some place and some young fella came in and he was like, oh, look at all this. Do you have that boy like Da Vinci? <laughs> 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 and the guy's like, oh. No, <laughs> imagine. Yeah. Oh, we've got. Yeah, we have. We put it in the toilet. We do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we have it above the the pisser. Well, it's kind of an unfinished Vitruvian man, <laughs> but it looks pretty good, you know. Um. Yeah. So yeah, I'm very. I'm quite curated with my with my B reels, but th- that's it's mm. the excitement of a new social media where not everyone's that serious. Mm. You know, you look back on like your first tweet. And it's like such a fucking dad tweet being like, hello to the world or hello, Twitter, you know, <laughs> is anybody out there? Or, you know, back in Facebook when it was your name mm. and you'd be like, you were like, Tony Campbell is thinking about, <laughs> you know, all those old Facebook things, is thinking about, yeah. you know, my first round tweet, the twist. Uh, was I set up my Twitter in 2013 um, wow. because my mum heard that Stenaline uh, were offering free boat journeys or something over mm-hmm. to France. So I have two tweets from the year 2013. Then there's a gap of, you know, seven years. 
Um, and it's just <laughs> at Stena Line. Can we have two free tickets, please? <laughs> Not really understanding how it works or anything like that. <laughs> and then replying under their tweet going, can me and my mum have two free tickets, please? <laughs> and, it was, and it was like, uh, I'd forgotten yeah. about it. I didn't like, I didn't know that. And then an, an article was written um, for the No Worries of Not show. And someone had gone, I don't know if that's something you can do, had gone all the way to the start and had shown the two tweets. And it was just like me. They're like, and he seems to have been very interested with Stella <laughs> Line. Imagine, like, as if that's like. Them trying to cancel yeah. you. And all it is is like his old tweets are like, oh, that's aged poorly, yeah. is his Stella Line. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. have this thing on Twitter um, just in case. I mean, I fear first when I was doing my tweets, I was like, oh, this is like, I love the idea of Twitter where it's going to, this is going to be like a chronicle of my thoughts, yeah. you know, comedic or, or, you know, or non-comedic or whatever, mm. you know, and this is going to be like my diary, you know, and I'm like, I'm, I'll look back on this and enjoy this. Um, and then I was like, no, fuck that. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then I look back and I'm like, ooh, that's yeah. not some of the, not like Anton's really bad, mm. but just, it's not funny and it's not my sentiment now and I yeah. don't stand by it now. Yeah. So... <laughs> I got this uh, kind of extension that auto deletes every tweet after one year. Mm. So it just act, you know, completely good. deletes everything. That's very good. Because there can't be like a word that we use now that's going to be bad in a year, you know? It's possible. It yeah. is possible. And then they'll just have that, you know? There's and they so have many that words on you. that, you know, within 10 years they suddenly stop being okay. And yeah. you know, there were words that we would have said a lot as well as kids that yeah. are no longer. So it's good. I mean, actually, maybe we should go onto our Facebooks and clean them <laughs> well I've, I've actually I've, I've said this before on the podcast what you can do on Facebook and this is crazy is that you can type in any word oh. including a slur <laughs> and type in any word and it'll actually tell you every single time that has appeared on your profile on a comment from your friends and kind of even friends of friends and it'll oh. come up in a big black you know kind of a black thing a bold, you know a big bold mm. yeah you know so yeah. you know if you know if someone has posted you know 15 years ago probably even at this stage mm. you know come out on Saturday don't be gay you know yeah. something like that mm. because of course, obviously gay people love to stay indoors famously <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, don't be gay and stay indoors yeah 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 you yeah. know I'd say there's a lot of that I'd everywhere. say there's a lot of that you yeah know? and it's yeah no no but not by me because I'd leave them all <laughs> <laughs> but by some people who are awful people yeah terrible <laughs> and I wouldn't talk to them I wouldn't talk to them no even uh, and I, you can just tell kind mm. of can't you, you yeah can. so we got to clean everything um, or is, it, it, is that going to result in like, you know, it's a, a less accurate view of the past. People are going to look sure. at the past and it's going to be very squeaky clean. Yeah. And it's not going to be an accurate representation. Mm -hmm. Do we have a duty for historical purposes to leave the dirty laundry hanging on the line? Look, if that's a hill you want to die on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do that, but I think you no, should think about that. I should have a think about that. So I was having a word with Killian and he gave me a new stance. <laughs> It's often it's very rare someone gives you a brand new stance to like die, you know. I um, I am terrible. I I have the same opinion of the per the last person I was talking to. That's how Oh I, my god, yeah, me that's too. That's how I go through life. I'm so malleable. It's insane. I kind of worry about it sometimes. I talk to someone and I go, that is so true. That mm. is so true. And then I'll walk to the next person and say, this person just told me this. It's so incredible. I don't and know. And they'll I, go, <laughs> no, no, no. That's bullshit. And I go, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're so right. That's so what you're saying. Yeah. And I just it's that's that's my curse and living of course and being married to a very you know opinionated and morally good woman mm. as well is kind of like yeah. I mean I don't even know if this is my voice right now <laughs> <laughs> or if this is I'm just regurgitating what my wife said <laughs> I have seen though I, I do think you don't give yourself enough credit because I have seen you kind of like kind of be nice to some people who are maybe being a bit of a dick and then you'd be like kind of you know civil with them and then you walk away and I'm like oh Killian's kind of nice to that guy and you're like what well, dick <laughs> 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 you know so you kind of have a still you still know who you are and know yeah, you know maybe, yeah yeah maybe the uh, Maybe the strong things are there, mm. um, but like kind of like very uh, light kind of internet-y kind of things. That's mm -hmm. how, I, like that kind of like small opinions you might sure. call them, like little day-to-day -day stuff on, new, not like, you know, capitalism or, you know, being good and or how you treat people. That stuff is all set in stone sure. from your parents or whatever. But like, you know, uh, the, the recent drama about like, uh, I don't know, bodies, 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 mm. uh, like, the opinion on that film I'm kind of like I'll listen to a podcast and go like that guy that is so true I'm just going to say mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. and then I'll talk to Mark who I do the <laughs> podcast with and he'll have his opinion and I'll be like no no actually that's my and I just that's change my opinion. light opinions I change yeah. yeah maybe I'm just trying to fit in <laughs> <laughs> I was reading this book uh, How to Build a Second Brain and it's all about writing down everything as you, as you like if you're watching a film you're like you have a thought write it down 
Mm. And if you're, you know, if you're reading a book, you know, on a Kindle or whatever, highlight it or like take a picture of it and snapshot mm. the real things that are like, ooh, and trying to like, ha- and trying to harness this kind of sensitivity to kind of inspiration or spark that you okay. just write everything down. Because this guy, uh, Tiago Forte, he said that the, int- he, yeah, Good well, name. yeah, he knows his shit. Yeah. He was saying that the intellectuals of the 1800s would, often carry around like a diary uh, and so they would essentially like read parts of the book uh, parts of a book at a very slow pace mm. and end up kind of writing a book of their thoughts about the book that would be much longer than the book itself of what it, it kind of stirred in their own emotions you know and a they lot of the intellectuals a lot of the intellectuals the intellectual elite so but, but they would never even, yeah. even sh- but never even share it they were just kind of like just I just, just, need, to, I just need to know what my thoughts are now we don't really have that luxury mm. but what we can do is you know I suppose we have to get to know what those kind of triggers and those sparks are so that we know what is kind of right for us because otherwise we're just kind of suggestively saying like oh no I like that breeze or I like that breeze and mm. it's all kind of coming and going it's a, is know? it a muscle or is it a is it a practice it's a muscle and a practice now I'm not doing it yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know no. but I have read a lot of this book do you have a joke do you have a joke book you have a joke book for your jokes no but thank god for you know max search options you know okay. I'm just typing in you know tits like too much. <laughs> <laughs> I know I don't have a lot of jokes about tits. Um, I don't think I have any jokes about tits. I've seen your show. Uh, there's a solid half hour on breasts. I uh, should do more on it. You're right. Um, I remember listening to your um, 33 things, 33 things for a 33 year old or something. Oh yeah. Like that. I thought it was a really good podcast. If anyone hasn't listened to it, I re- I thought Thank it was you. very good. I told a few friends to listen. A lot of good life advice in it. And then it gets to like your favorite things or whatever. And number two is breasts. Yeah, number two is boobs. Yeah. I was just like listening to it, kind of like, <laughs> I think it was before I knew you, I'm not sure. And I was like, um, this is really good advice. Like, you had a similar thing where you moved away from on, you'd come back, and mm-hmm. there was a lot of that in it. And I was like, this is brilliant. What do I want? And it was just breasts. Yeah, it's boobs. Yeah, <laughs> it's boobs. But that's, you know, that's me reacting to. Do you know what? Star Wars was on that for a while. I don't think it's on there anymore. Fried chicken's still on there. But you yeah. know the things that just spark joy? The Marie Kondo. Mm. You, you, just, you hold it close to you <laughs> and <laughs> whatever it is, chicken or a tit, and it's just like, does it go just... Mm. And like, I'm, I'm being specific, you mm. know. Obviously, I'm a one-tit man. Well, two-tit yeah. man, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it, does it spark that level of, of, of joy Star with you? Star Wars, um, just on that kind of thing, uh, has is it as a result of the new? Yeah, well, well funnily enough, I mean, the I thought Star Wars? Sorry. Mandalorian's going to come out again. Mandalorian season three is going to okay. come out, and then it'll, that'll totally reinvigorate my love of it. You know, I, w- I watched a bit of the new series Andor, and you know, Andor, <laughs> either or, it's uh, it's all right. I like it was actually quite well written, but then I was like, I don't want it. I'm not Aris going back to it. Yeah, I'm not Aris going back mm. to it. You know, so I'm just kind of a bit like, Meh, whatever, it's there. Yeah. You know, it's not it's not the, the majesty of space and mm. the stars is kind of a bit gone. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, did you watch the Lord of the Rings show? I know you're Lord of the I Rings. I did, no. yeah. And I was kind of thinking, I was kind of thinking in that prism because I'm, I like Lord of the Rings. And I love Star Wars as well. But I was wondering, like, how this, whether I view this Rings of Power series as just its own thing, mm. or whether it can somehow tarnish the, the trilogy. You know, mm. Peter Jackson's trilogy, not like the whole mythical world of it. Sure. And I was like, absolutely not. Like, it doesn't in any way. Obviously, they've borrowed heavily from it stylistically and everything like that. And that's how you adapt Tolkien like mm-hmm. he's kind of showed how you adapt it but like it was it'll never change my opinions on like what I got from those three films yeah. um, even, and I also I'm not hating it like I'm mm-hmm. kind of enjoying it um, but as, as, a, as a film nut that mm. you are mm-hmm. I mean do you I mean w- what is it about seeing a film like the Lord of the Rings like say you see Lord of the Rings in the cinema and you're absolutely blown away by it like nothing can really tarnish that experience mm. is the love of it beyond that trying to hook onto that initial reaction that you had you know yeah i well i don't know i mean like with lord of the rings is kind of specific because i think it is the world of middle earth that i like being in that world Mm -hmm. and um finding out information about it and it's that kind of like different reality that you would like i remember when i was a kid i used to think like even just like the shittest universe i would like to live in that more like i like tintin i would love to live in the world of tintin wow like i think it would be amazing like I was like any type of like magic-y kind of land I'd love to live in it you kind of look like a Tintin animation because yeah. <laughs> of your dark eyes yeah. and your strong features <laughs> but maybe I don't know what I'd be Captain Hart Captain Adduk Captain Adduk yeah um, but like Lord of the Rings I think is the ultimate one of those because Middle Earth and that whole realm has its own history and mm-hmm. its own even kind of like creation myth and all that stuff so I think I just love 
the idea. It's just a world where, uh, the, you know, where there's baddies and there's goodies, but the baddie, the, the goodies always win and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, Very yeah, yeah. To the uh, world we live in. What would you like to be if you were in Middle Earth? I I think, um, I, I mean, like, it's funny. It's like such a hard, because I think the hobbits are obviously, the hobbits and Hobbiton live this ideal mm -hmm. lifestyle. They have a kind of like beautiful society. It's it's actually you know based originally on kind of Irish people and Scottish sure. and Welsh people. So it's very. But then like being an elf, like living for fucking ages, doing cool shit. Yeah, uh, that would be class. But then they are kind of dry annoying. Shites. They're yeah. dry shites. They're a bit and more then, crack in this show. Yeah, they're they a bit are. more wisecracking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. they're very. I was talking about it on the pod. They're very like witty. Yeah. Oh, good lad, Riel. Yeah. Well, uh, never have I seen such a. And it's like this is like wit. Yeah. It's not funny. Yeah, it's, like, it's, a bit dra it's a bit draining. Mm, it's like academics <coughs> making jokes. It's yeah, it doesn't really work. Yeah, um, and I'm like, oh, you still talking? Is this setup <laughs> still happening? You know, <laughs> everyone speaks like Oscar Wilde. Yeah, you know, that's what I say because I'm not an academic <laughs> and I don't know any academic. <laughs> what are you fucking Oscar Wilde? <laughs> Um, my well, you're all in the ditch, but some of us are looking at the, the stars. stars yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a new kind of kink for like, um, kind of a, a like a, a lovely like plump uh, hobbit wife. Mm. I think Rosie, uh, like Rosie, Rosie. The barmaid. Yeah yeah, 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 that would be wonderful. Yeah, and have fourteen children. Fourteen children, yeah. and yeah. Live, to, live to a great old age and die in bed. Yes, like that kind of thing. Yeah, and Smoking barley, weed and blowing and ships. Barley. I never, leave, I never leave a hundred meter radius. Yeah, <laughs> going yeah. anywhere. It's, even the shops. So I don't feel mm. right leaving my house. Uh, it's like <laughs> just not enjoying going anywhere. Not going anywhere, <laughs> which sometimes you can be. You know, oh, don't be a hobbit man. Come <laughs> out. You that's know, good. that's yeah. That's yeah. That's a good line. I do like dwarves as well. Mm. Um, obviously the beard's good. You know, um, the ladies have beards as well, which I think is progressive. Yeah, that's cool. The. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Conchita Worst the Rohan kind of vibe. Um, men are pretty cool. Like they have that horse life, the horse lifestyle. There's honor. They've got like long flowing yeah. locks. Yeah. Um. It's only issue is I don't like wind. Um, very windy up so there. Really windy. Really in windy Rohan. up there. Yeah. Um. So like I think maybe you could wear a helmet. Yeah. <laughs> all the time with the big so mane hard. on the back. <laughs> you know. No, we didn't really get to see much of Gondor looking good. Gondor yeah. maybe before got attacked by all those. Um. Mm -hmm. What are they called? Uh, the orcs or the what are the flying things called? Oh, the the flying Nazgul. Flying Nazgul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They just said Nazgul, but flying. Yeah. 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 Not very, for a man <laughs> yeah. who spent you know like years trying to come up with the name Nazgul, mm -hmm. and then when they're on, they're flying beasts. You just flying Nazgul. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean Gondor. I always say uh, <coughs> I always pretend to myself that I love uh, countryside and being in nature. Oh, and I stuff. mean you're you're you've made a brand of it now. I do. I love it, but then. Anytime I've moved anywhere, I've moved to I've moved to two cities, and that's the only time I've ever really moved. I moved to Paris and I moved to New York, which are two that like largest cosmopolitan no, places. <laughs> to li but I mean, like obviously, I talk one way, but inside I must like being in cities. You know, mm -hmm. and then I moved back here to Dublin, which obviously you know the hustle and bustle, the um, hustle and bustle <laughs> of. I tell you, it's an oasis. Oh, you always see that. It's always written. <laughs> I, I, me and Terry say it all the time that we you always see like. Um, <laughs> we saw it like t for 20 different places when we were in Marrakesh the description on TripAdvisor you know it's an oasis of calm within the hustle and bustle of busy Marrakesh that exact line for like 20 different cafes it's an oasis of calm between the hustle and bustle well obviously you were um, you know you've gone off to the wilderness you've driven a van mm. you occupied the hashtag van life I did um, mm. you know kind of but kind of on its crest of being cool, but I'm not saying that you got. I, I'm sure you had it in your head before TikTok kind of ruined it for you. Yeah, you well, know, we it's it was Anna's idea, and okay. uh, we were building it for about a year and a half before we actually set off on our journey. So mm. if you're saying when did it stop being cool, and like when we thought of doing it, we were d definitely before it stopped being cool. Before it stopped being cool, good. Uh, we've <laughs> you've, done you've worked the maths, yeah. Yeah, we've done yeah. Uh, we've done our historical analysis, and we were just on the cusp of cool. So for people who don't know, um, Killian and his partner Anna, mm -hmm. uh, Reek fitted out a van and yeah. drove through Europe, well, through Spain and Portugal. Yeah, yeah. we got well. Anna bought a uh, Ford Transit um, medium wheel base. Uh, two she's very meter. cool she's cool and she, this was her kind of thing and she was like I really want to do this mm -hmm. and I was kind of slower to get on it but then the COVID happened and everything and um, we moved out to Ennis uh, where her dad lives and spent the winter just like 
doing it up, which it was honestly like wow. a metal canister with nothing Spent in it. Spent the winter doing it yeah. up. You're like something out of a book. <laughs> well, honestly, the first day we got, the first thing we had to do was cut a hole in the roof. Wow. Um, which you're not mad. allowed to do that. I know, yeah. It really feels, <laughs> when you're doing it, it's like, are we allowed to do this? That's mad. Um, and I got on the roof and it was like covered in ice. So the first job that I had to do on wow. it was like to get a, a scraper and scrape the ice off. And it was so cold that I was only able to do like a small square meter of it. And then I like went back inside and had a cup of tea and then came out and it was just frozen again. <laughs> so it was like a horrible time to do it. It was really bad. Wow. Like our fingers were cold and stuff. But eventually we finished it. We did a stint in the winter and then we did a stint in the summer and then we did a stint before we left, which was December of last year. So mm. like seven months ago, eight wow. months, nine months. 10 months ago. 10 months ago. Jesus Christ. Wow. Yeah. So that, and then we left in the December. Um, and we got a boat over to Cherbourg. Oh. And then drove down through France very quickly in like a day. And, uh, and it was really interesting because it was winter, like December's winter. And we watched, like, we watched the season or whatever, like, change. You know, it was wow. cold. It's cold in Spain, but it was. You know, far far warmer and the, and the day get longer within like a day it was incredible. and what was your soundtrack to this montage of seasons what were we listening to uh, vivaldi um <laughs> of course <laughs> no i think uh you just keep playing winter I, over and I over never, again never ever get tired of that song by sia uh you know i ain't got dollar bills my yeah. fun tonight <laughs> yeah i play yeah. that song a lot like i really like it it's a very fun it's good it's got a nice moon baton mm. and what was another th there was this very funny song we hadn't set it up properly that was one thing we did all this fucking stuff in the van mm -hmm. but one thing we didn't set up was like being able to connect our phones to the speakers mm -hmm. so we uh so we weren't able to do that i had a bluetooth speaker that we would use in the front most of the time but sometimes we had to use local radio and there was this very funny song um called toka 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 and it's very <laughs> very very funny song and uh we heard that on the radio and it was playing a lot it was a spanish song i think and i would <laughs> sometimes prank kind of like we'd be listening to kind of driving music which is usually like you know, background kind of ambient kind mm -hmm. of stuff. And then I just slip toka toka. <laughs> toka toka toka. Like that. It was very fun. I'd, I'd, so I do a bit of pranking. That's fun yeah. as well. Mm. So converting a van, what's the major hurdle? Like you have to build shit and everything in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to do a lot of stuff. The main, you think you're going to be spending most of your time in the van doing things, but you actually spend, I'd say, 90% of it watching YouTube. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, okay, And cool. there's all these different guys. There's this English lad called Greg Virgo who does the electronics. The electronics were the hardest kind of thing to grapple your head around. Um, and he's an incredibly boring man, but a very sweet guy who's, like, I think retired. Mm -hmm. And he had on his, he had this very funny thing on his uh, social media, which is his retirement counter. And he would have, like, when I first started watching him, he had, like, 100 days till my retirement. And then he was, like, slowly going down. He got there recently mm. and he retired and he was so happy. <laughs> He's just like posting it every day just with his grandkids going around. He lives in a van as well. Oh, amazing. Um, I was like, wow, retirement is like this thing that we should all be looking forward to. Mm. Um, obviously, our generation aren't ever going to retire. Um, no, we won't get to, <laughs> you know. But, you know, if you... What's um, the story <coughs> with comedians, actually? Because I didn't really think about it. I didn't. No, you won't retire. But put, uh, invest in your pension now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, well, I was thinking about that recently. I mean, I do want to talk more about the van, but um, and I'm very fascinated by how you actually make the kind of do the kind of handy stuff in mm. it. But uh, um, we're kind of lucky in that right now because of what we do, mm. um, because we can learn and we can learn new techniques to make different things, and because we essentially are just writing and performing, we are not. I don't think we'll ever be too old to be the best at what we do. You know, if you as long as you commit the time to it, you could probably be get even better the longer you go. You know, that's true. Yeah. So there, there's it's not like you've chosen something that any part of you, apart from, you know, your wit will give will give way, <laughs> you know, in your in your in your 80s. But uh, <laughs> it's not like it's not like, you know, your your hands, you don't lift shit anymore. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a sore back, you know, that's true. Yeah, we're fine. Right. We're, gonna we're be fine. Grand. We're totally fine. We're totally fine. As long as us squires can always use our <laughs> our sharp tongues. That's this is an example. Now, what you said, that's what I think now. <laughs> that's what I now think. <laughs> Don't store that shit. Ask someone who knows what they're talking no, about. No, no, that's that. it. Like, okay, <laughs> shit. Do you experience yeah. in carpentry? Uh, no, but Anna's dad is a violin maker. <laughs> yeah, she's so cool. <laughs> He's a violin maker, and he 
is incredible. So it's uncomfortable sleeping on like nine violins. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And the you know fridge the, just been like two violins. You know the Game of Thrones uh, throne, which yes. is all made of swords. His armchair is just violins. Wow, that's wild. Yeah. Does it make a kind of <laughs> <laughs> when he sits on it and slides yeah. down it? No, Does he ever sh- shimmy his bum? Yeah, and then Beethoven's fifth will slip. That's out. wild. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so he did a lot of the finishing. What we did is, I don't know if I should be saying this on the podcast, but to to convert your van, first you need to convert it to a van it has to meet a certain requirements and then it becomes a camper but for it to become a camper the state has to examine it and then uh say yes this is now officially going to be taxed as a camper van right um but they will value the van and then make you pay 20 percent of it or something like that or 10 percent. so they what? look at it's insane it's like real like it really made me like a libertarian the whole process i was Fucking just like there are vans let us do what we want with them um, that's insane yeah so they also what's more mental is they so there's no gaff and to sleep in your fucking car yeah you have to pay tax <laughs> yeah yeah and you it, to convert it you it, so you spend all this time um, working on it you also have to get you also get taxed on the labour that you spend on it so when you're writing down the list of uh, so the work that you've done on it, you need to pay tax on that. What are you talking I about? Mean, it's obviously, it's meant to be protection, so that like someone can't set up a business where they're just getting vans, converting them to camper vans, and is you know. Why can't they? Li- I know. <laughs> why? You're right. I don't know. I mean, it may be a libertarian. I was like, why can't anyone just? Why can't we all just do what we want all the time? Bollocks! If I'm 80 and I've lost my wit and ability <laughs> to see, I should be able to drive my house car <laughs> without paying any tax. <laughs> You know, um, don't take my license. So what we did was we kind of, we built it and um, and we didn't like do the beautiful finishing that we currently have in it. You mm. see, I showed you photos of it. It's like very, very nice. If people want to see photos of this, if you scroll back a bit on my mm-hmm. Instagram, you'll be able to see wonderful. Yeah. Uh, but there's like Your a polished. Beautiful Stenoline tweets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, and uh, we didn't do that. We kind of did like a more angular kind of rough. We didn't use the expensive wood. We did that kind of thing. Mm. Um. So we kind of did some of the carpentry, but mainly Brian did the carpentry. We did the insulation. Uh, we did the sound deadening. Uh, we did all, like all these. We did the electricity. We did the plumbing, the gas. Uh, we did the, um, God, there were so many different steps to it. I'm kind of trying to remember all. So we, we uh, the worst day of my life, this is the worst day of my life, was when we put in the marmoleum floor. What is the marmoleum? <laughs> marmoleum is like fancy lino. Right. Um, you know, Older hospitals, I don't think newer hospitals really have them, but older hospitals have this type of floor, which is kind of like a thick lino. Sometimes mm-hmm. uh, sometimes it like curls up on the wall. Sometimes the wall like curls up like that. It's a mm-hmm. very thick lino. And Anna really liked it. It's very expensive. Um, but she was like, it looks very good. We need to get it. And, uh, and so we got it. Uh, and I think it's the kind of thing that you just need to be industrial workers to put in. But we thought we could. And so we had these, I don't know why, but Brian and his dad had these massive cylinder like of of steel, like really <laughs> heavy, like heavier than anything you'd see in the gym. And so we laid down all this glue and then we laid the marmoleum down on it. And if if you even like, it was so brittle, like even if you slightly shifted it the wrong way, it would just crack. What? And that was like, you know, 200 euro down the drain. So we were all just like freaking out. We were doing it on some morning. And then um, I'm kind of like slightly chill under pressure sometimes. Anna and her dad were like chaotically rolling these big steel things on the marmoleum floor. Uh, glue was just like squirting out. Like, oh. you know, when a burger's got too much yeah. sauce in it, it was like squirting out and uh, it was all lumpy. And Anna was screaming, like, it's lumpy, it's lumpy. And her dad was like rolling furiously. <laughs> and I was just like, Is there any, does anyone need like a cup of tea? Or is there <laughs> I was just like freaking out. Um, it never really settled. It never really settled. I think it was a, but it looks, it does look quite nice. I think I just kept going. It looks great. I think it looks great. And I was like, it looks terrible. It looks, I think it looks great. Um, yeah. But then saying it looks great was the wrong thing to say. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, which I thought was, you know, the right thing to say. No, the right thing um, to say is, I hear that you, I, I hear and I respect the fact that you think it looks like shit. Yeah. Let's think about, let's talk about that for a while. Yeah. And then later, well, or maybe never, you yeah. say you think no, it looks never. great. Yeah. People don't want your opinion sometimes. Yeah. Um, and that's, so... Uh, that that was the worst day, but then eventually the marmoleum floor fit in. We got all the everything in, and it was it's a stunning little thing. I can't stand up in it, um, and I can't lie down in it. Um, no, yeah, no. <laughs> can't lie down in it. <laughs> can't lie down to the bed. Uh, no, we cut two divots into the walls to kind of like make me be able to fit, but I can't. I mean, um, 
yeah, do you that sleep was, quite long anyway? I sleep diagonally, and then Anna can kind of fit. Oh, that's handy. Like we kind of sleep in a sort of like a like a, a V that's been tilted on its axis. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> is that does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so she's she must like that getting get in your little nook. Yeah, she's in. She's got a nook. Yeah. And then I sleep across. So I'm able to stretch out my legs. Um, also, you're kind of like the first person to be killed if someone swings the doors open. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or no, actually, <laughs> that's her. Actually. Oh, okay. Well, actually, it depends on what door. There's two access points. Okay. Fine. And I think if I was trying to kill someone. I wouldn't go for the slidey door because those yeah. things can be a bit difficult. Bang open the back door. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop, stop. And stop, you stop. would actually wouldn't even need to enter the van. No, and just get in, get out. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird, you know, because where we sleep in our bed is purely dictated on which side of the r- room Terry thinks an intruder is coming in. <laughs> like she, or so, the, so the bed's here and then her side, she's like on the left-hand side, but the door's on the left. Mm. So you would think, well, that's a bit weird. An intruder will come in kill her first right yeah so why is she on the left but on the right hand side is a kind of attic door that for some reason she's even more spooked by <laughs> really if you get into the nitty-gritty <laughs> of it she must actually believe that someone's in there otherwise really? we'd not well otherwise we wouldn't be sleeping in this arrangement I feel like Terry would be good in a, with an intruder though she Maybe. would be very good with an intruder but she listens to too much true crime podcasts ah. that she and she's like no it's training tony like i do it for training <laughs> we were once staying in her caravan in britis and we were the only ones in this whole camper Van Park and it was during the winter it was like when I'd moved I came back she was living in Dublin I came back from London Mm -hmm. there's not many places to have a ride (laughs) so because we didn't you know I was saying my mom she was you know know, so we went to the camper van and um, and then uh, I was we had like everything on like all the heaters on the Mm -hmm. power shower was on Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden the the electricity goes and she's like oh and I come out and like dry myself there's candles everywhere and Terry has hidden a knife in every room (laughs) It's almost like some sexy <laughs> seance, but it wasn't. It wasn't like a sexy offering. It was because she thought if anyone goes into these rooms, it needs to be a knife. So then she was like, you need to go out to the electricity box and I need you to take this. She gives me a butcher knife. <laughs> and I was like, just... What do you l- think I'm doing? But like this? literally tell me what you want me to do with the knife. Tell me you want me to stab someone because I need you to actually see the logic here. And she's like, it's just in case you see someone. And I'm like, if I see someone, I'm going to say, hi, do you have electricity? Do you need any help? It's like... Ah! <laughs> sorry, my no wife. Questions. My wife told me to do this, you know, or so girlfriend sorry. at the time. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I was Literally, in the shower. I'm so sorry. I was in the shower. You want me to tell your family? Like, I'm <laughs> yeah. So sorry. <laughs> What's your address? I'll send them a basket. <laughs> so, um, yeah. so yeah, it's a weird kind of uh, arrangement. And um, what was it like? What was it like? You know, did you did you miss the comforts of home while being in the van, or was it a kind of like, do you know what, transcendent? I could do this forever. I think that's what you. Anyone who is stepping out into that type of lifestyle um you've like can you kind of consider yourself you're like oh, i could do this like I, yeah. i'm one of the ones who can do it because a lot mm. of people like the classic van life videos are you know this kind of uh sepia toned yeah. uh beautiful lifestyle and then they always have one video which is them facing the camera usually like bed hair mm-hmm. and then the you know the the fucking um like the tag is Van life sucks. Yeah. And that's the big one. It's the van life sucks video. Mm. And then the opening line of van life Things sucks. in my van, that just makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> no, but the opening line to the van life sucks video is always, so van life doesn't actually suck. And it's always, this is like a, I swear, well. there's like 5 million of these videos online. Mm-hmm. Um, But we were like, we're not the people who are going to say van life sucks. I like grew up, you know, traveling in a van. I think we can do it. But uh there's some like I I get like something about me uh, is like I actually really like being able to stand up in the place that I live in. Sure. And I really enjoy uh, not like, you know, not having to like shit in my bedroom in like a bucket. <laughs> uh, and this is just like a weird. These are high. These are too high standards. They're too man. High. I think I you like, need to give it over. Uh, not like showering like in a back. Like, I mean, these are things I can do to if there's like a give and take of like sure. I'm looking at the most beautiful view in this really secluded secluded place mm. and we're the only people here this is amazing we're eating dinner under the sun this is beautiful mm-hmm. uh, but like I think I have like maybe like there's like 20 30 40 I'd say maybe 25 wander poos okay and then I'm out yeah and I want to just be able to like sit on my phone mm. in a, like a nice clean bathroom yeah um, yeah, yeah yeah I want a hot shower I want a bath uh, so th- so there's like mm. I'd say I can go a month I think a that's month, as long okay. as I can go yeah 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 how long um, did you go? 
We were two and a half months. Okay. Um, which was great. It was yeah. it was amazing. There was no point where I was like, I'm tired of this. Sometimes you do, but that's life. Like you're not. It's not like every day you're in a house and you're like, fucking love this house. <laughs> yeah. um, like you don't. It's not like you're appreciating it. Um. So you know, it it was it was very good. But I think like a month is a pretty solid, nice chunk. And how how are you as a travel companion? Because I I find that like on every like every third or fourth day, no matter where I am. If you know, if I'm in a mansion, if I'm at Disneyland, if I'm around people on like the third day, I'm like, I hate every <laughs> fuck off and get away from me. And I need a, yeah. a lot of quiet time to kind of detox I from, guess you know, when you're in a couple and like you have one, s- you have one space and it's your whole thing. It, like, like we would be like, uh, right, I'm going to go for a walk. And, I, you know, I just go for a walk for like, you know, an hour or two hours and nice. get the person. And I think it was quite important to f- to do that that was difficult like you know and i think that was the same in lockdown as well mm. i think most people experience that the dem- democracy of space and like mm. you know those types of roommates that would sit in the fucking sitting room all day or use the kitchen all the time or hang around when you actually just wanted to watch an episode of something by yourself yeah those people became not just m- like they were previously mildly irritating then they became like the you know the worst villain being pure in the world villains. and you kind of have to go like you're spending too much time here or whatever uh but it's we, mad I how think, you can kind of yeah. think in your head you kind of make up a narrative like they're actually doing that it's gone so far now they must be doing it on purpose yeah. <laughs> they're doing it purely to spite me <laughs> to take comfort in this pandemic it really is on the couch yeah yeah i mean roommates drive you mad ma- like bad roommates drive you completely insane um yeah. me and terry had a, a flat in in Stratford in East London and one of the ways to kind of save for you know a, a mortgage in London which was very hard at the time was we actually had to deal with the landlords so we could sublet a room so we had various people staying in the room and it was great it was great to have a roommate mm. but even though they were like literally my roommates I was so fucking territorial <laughs> like Terry says she'll never like she's like you can't ever live with anyone because even I mean, my best even like Jordan like Jordan was you know mm. uh, staying with us for a while and I was still you know he'd come home sometime and I'd be like fucking you know like <laughs> and it's, it's his house it's his house yeah you know but uh so maybe it was an asshole <laughs> anyway sorry what were you saying no i mean i think yeah like that kind of like i think we've gone through covid so i think the living in a small space thing was actually kind of maybe a bit of a breeze we knew how to do it sometimes mm. it was difficult or whatever but overall it was it was grant it was grant yeah i mean we've gone out for a while a few years now so we kind of sure how to do that um like you know sometimes you see those couples and they're you know um they're old couples and they're sitting there they're having dinner and they're quiet and you're kind of there with your kind of your, your bird and you're like hell yeah, this is mad like I never want to be one of them and now I'm kind of like that looks unbelievable yeah <laughs> that looks unbelievable no one's talking they're literally just looking at their roast yeah you know they're, now I, I yeah. obviously I do want to be in a relationship where I can always be like where I can moan about the roast mm. or compliment the roast mm. as I get older I'm probably going to moan more because <laughs> I'm being more conservative as I get older <laughs> But uh, yeah, I remember know. there was this couple in the bar in New York I worked in, and they'd come in and they wouldn't say anything to each other, and they would hold hands and just drink uh, for hours. That's amazing. And I was like, that is incredible. That's pretty cool. But like at the start, I'd be like, me, oh god, we we get into the very fibers <laughs> of our minds. <laughs> yeah. We discuss the, the yeah. depths of what it means to be human. They just sitting there holding hands and they, without any effort are far more romantic than you know. Big time. You know, it's. It, you just yeah. got to figure out how to communicate. And I, I know a good thing that I that I found is, you know, I'll just say to Terry, I'm going to talk at you now for a while <laughs> about Avatar <laughs> <laughs> or whatever it might be. I'm just going to talk at you. Is that okay for like 10 minutes? Like, okay. And then she'll be like, wow, that's crazy. Like, really? <laughs> and he developed new cameras to film underwater? Yeah. <laughs> you know? When's so that coming out? December 15th. <laughs> Ooh, are you excited? I'm very excited. Yeah, yeah. I know you kind of called me on. You said it was a big call for me to say that Avatar is going to be a greater franchise than The Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Okay. In- including the books. <laughs> um, which was maybe a bit antagonistic. I was very excited. Yeah. Um, but I, I, you know. I'm delighted for you. I'm really excited Thank for you, you. That, that this is going to come out. I can't wait to see it as well. Thank you. I can't wait to see what, what you know, the uncrowned king of cinema is yeah. going to do with it, you know. Uh, what for me, it's about going home <laughs> <laughs> to Pandora. For me, don't forget to say it to the camera with your me. avatar <laughs> products in place. For me, I see you. I see you. Right? I see you. Uh, for me, it's about going home to Pandora. Is it the unobtainium? Is it about unobtainium? Um, for me, because you know, I'm I'm a Navi. Really, I kind of my spirit. I'm a Navi. Um, it's about going home to Pandora. <laughs> it's not about the unobtainium for me. Unobtainium is a real 
is a, is a real scientific term for something that is unobtainable. Ian. <laughs> so, I see that you've swapped out your watch that tells you you're constantly having a panic attack. Yeah. <laughs> that was so fun. We were at uh, Ivy Gardens. Yeah. <laughs> you were walking them down, being like, "My watch says I'm freaking out right now." <laughs> You just kept saying, "My watch is." I'm gonna stop looking at this because <laughs> your heart rate was. It was up. 99. Cause we all were like, how yeah. many? Like, I, I think I clocked in like a good a good 10k just by pacing. Yeah, there was very funny. Like, because it was a massive, massive room, biggest room I've ever played in, and um, and we were like walking like kind of pendulums that weren't hitting each other, yeah. like directly past, and like uh, and I was just like just freaking out a bit now, and you're like, yeah, me too, yeah, 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 and yeah. just like running our lines in our heads or whatever, mm-hmm. got, trying to d- get into whatever headspace. But it was very funny. <laughs> it was like uh, I had that. I was before Electric Picnic. I was kind of a bit hungover and freaking out. And I walked past and I met David O'Doherty for the first time kind of meeting him. And I'm like, oh, I, lo- I love him. Like, he's mm. amazing. And I was just like, no, no, not now, please. Not not while I'm like this. I was just pacing up and down like. Whoa, yeah. Whoa. And he's like, hey, man, what's up? And I'm like, David, I'm freaking out right now. I'm sorry. I can't. <laughs> my watch. I was showing him my watch. My watch. I'm freaking out. It's, <laughs> I, I don't. You know, I, not right now, but I love you. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That's good. You can swap it out. Now you just can read the actual no, yeah, human yeah, and time. Yeah, it's better. Like, Helmet gave it to me. My dad gave me a watch. Oh. Isn't that so, like, cool? Is it a cool German watch? Uh, no. I don't know. It's a 13, uh, 1888. I don't know what it is. I think it's a fairly normal watch, but he's the kind of man who every man should have a watch. I'm fascinated, obviously, <laughs> you know, with your father, because yeah. even the stories that you tell about you doing things, like, you know, cutting a roof into a van, mm. I'm like, that's... And then have it in the in the freezing winter, and there was only a meter, and it was frozen over by the time I came back. You know, yeah, like that's like a dad's story, but like that happened like a year ago for you. I did, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you think? Do you think us, um, us Irish? I mean, I hope you don't take offense to this. Pure bloods mm. <laughs> <laughs> are um, <laughs> are softer than the kind of continental European. No, I'd say I'd say it'd be the opposite, but maybe in the like uh, I think Irish men are much more. Uh, into like the average Irish man is more into kind of macho, ladsy kind of. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it's like toxic masculinity per se, but this idea of being like a manly man. Mm-hmm. I think that's much more here in Ireland. Uh, Germans are co- more German men are more comfortable in femininity than Irish men. I think. Mm. Um, I don't know. Wh- I don't know where that's from, but like you know, German men like for much longer than Irish people have liked wearing like nice clothes and like maybe you know even like waxing or uh, you know nice. getting their eye or whatever that kind of stuff they like look I like to look nice and um, guess what they look better yeah. <laughs> and guess what happens when you do that you look better um, you know yeah. uh, so I think like uh, we like also just to reiterate like Anna's dad is a carpenter and he did a, there was a lot of babying like fair what did we like there was a lot of you know when your dad's like uh, you know, holding the drill and you're just holding the drill bit. Yeah. And it's like, when do you, or you're holding the torch. That's the classic. Kind yeah, of, the holding like the torch. Like, there was like, you know, I'm a 28 year old man holding a torch for yeah. some, for my girlfriend's dad. Like, that was the kind of situation. So it was a lot of it was sure. very emasculating. The thing about um, the torch thing, sorry, just to, to, yeah. to, just while, you know, and your dad being like, no, like, you're not getting the right. He's like, yeah, because guess what? You're in the fucking way. <laughs> yeah, so, know. dad, guess what? Of course I can't get into this tiny hole because you're in the way. Get out of there. I'm sick of you making me feel like I can't hold a torch. Uh, I couldn't. Also, wouldn't it make more sense? And just saying, like, didn't they used to send kids down the mines? Like, smaller spaces, smaller guys. Yeah. Uh, send them in the little nooks with the torch. <laughs> He's saying know? hire a small guy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you've got your own little small guy. Oh, me? Yeah, I just send him in. Go on just in there. remember that. But remember to come back out. Because <laughs> Daddy missed you very if you got stuck in there. <laughs> make sure you come did home. You get, did you get the, oh, the Halloween costumes? <laughs> did you get them? <laughs> did you get them? <laughs> we we'll fucking get them. Yeah. <laughs> did you get your jackets? Get your winter jackets. But anyway, sorry, you were saying. Um, I don't know what I was saying. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt <laughs> you too hard. Um, no. But that is, that is that's interesting. I, I suppose I say tough, but I also, you know, there's okay. a level of handiness, I suppose, that, that um, seems to be more prevalent. Or maybe it's not. Maybe yeah, Irish I people are know. handy, and maybe, I don't know, maybe my I'm da- just not. My dad's always, like, saying, oh, I'm not, I'm not DIY enough, even though he's incredible. Like, he does great stuff. Uh, but my Irish granddad was, like, amazing. He built, like, a whole... Hut, remember I told I told you about that. Mm, like he the built hut. a whole house and mm-hmm. um and like wire to the grid. When you're wiring up a van, you're only wiring to a twelve volt system, so there's no chance of dying. Like if you got a shock off, it would be sore, but it wouldn't be mm. like death inducing. Sure. Uh, but my granddad could work with the actual grid and that kind of thing, which is. And I always asked him how he did that, and he said he would go to the library and buy a book and read the book. That's insane. 
That's insane. I looked at him like he was like, like, how did you? I what? don't. I don't even know if I can read now anymore, like properly read. Yeah, you know? it's scary. I was watching the Bob Ross, um, you know, joy painting thing, mm. and um, he was like, and I'm going to draw a little squirrel, a little squirrel here, and uh, if you don't know what a squirrel looks like, you can go to your local library. You can take out a book and look. If I wanted to see, if I like, what kind of squirrel do I want to see? <laughs> do I want to see one with big nuts? Do I want to see one? <laughs> giving someone a, you know, a blowy. <laughs> what do I want to see in a squirrel? Yeah. I can do that right now without even thinking of it. And I won't even remember that I saw the squirrel today. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even it's just amazing the presence you had to do to go to a library and no, get a book the, about. The funnier one was how, I mean, me and Mark for our podcast, we're kind of rebranding at the moment. We're going to change the name and we're going to change the graphic and stuff like that. And maybe start actually recording episodes. Oh at wow! Some point. Yeah, well, I don't know. Well, we that's like that's like up. the fifth step. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but we were looking for a background. It was to be like a cinema uh, as the background for, for the graphic, and we were just on Google and we were looking for the graphic that we wanted, and so we were like uh, dark cinema room because what we wanted was a, a dark cinema room with uh, red the velvet red seats. seats. Yep. And, uh, and sort of like, d but dark and not too well lit and from an audience perspective. Mm. And what was mad was we knew that what we wanted was there. Yeah. We just had to find it. That's crazy. And it's insane that we just conjured up this thought in yeah. our head and we didn't even think twice about the fact that whether it existed or not. Yeah. And we're like, that obviously exists. We yeah. just have to find it. We eventually found it and we're like, there it is. And we just took it and <laughs> used it. <laughs> That's insane. It's like the availability of not just things that exist, mm -hmm. but things that you just thought of in your yeah, head. Yeah. Like, what about, like, you know, a dog that has a cat's tail uh, and, you know, a chicken head? You're like, just Google it. It's there. Don't worry. I mean, <laughs> it's probably already a cryptid that exists right now, yeah. you know? <laughs> You're right, though. You kind of are like, where, you know, are you conjuring this? <laughs> because you saw it and then you got it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's exactly what we imagined. But it's, uh, and yet, even though we have all these things, like, you know, you sometimes you st can still visualize something in your mind and you can't quite pull it off, you know? That's why I find, I was kind of tinkering away with kind of software as I'm like, you get better at seeing it exactly how you had it in your mind, you know? Mm. The more you learn, the more you understand. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, the annoying thing is you have to, with software, you just have to learn them. You just have to learn it. Yeah. But you just have to learn by doing. I find that I've done like, you know, you know Skillshare things and I'm like and here's some files you can download from my nature documentary I'm like I'm not fucking making that <laughs> I don't want to make your na nature naked documentary I want to make my own stuff but I you just have to kind of mess around with it yeah I do love like editing videos when they're like um, when they, they obviously have to when they're doing a tutorial on how to edit they always have to choose something and they're like here's just uh, something I was working on earlier yeah. and it's like the one I looked at like just this morning was three Harley Davidson lads yeah. driving down a motorway <laughs> I was like what were you working on and they were just going like and yeah. then like he was I was learning how to track a graphic to an object and um, and like the graphic said like uh, Tony the head honcho yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, what was he working on <laughs> here's just something I was working on <laughs> yeah. and it's like some woman's leg <laughs> scrolling down I guess I could zoom in on that um, but it's mad because you should be able to like you should be able to pat yourself on the back for watching a constructive YouTube video but like while you're watching that you're also watching you know I'm watching like gameplay videos you know mm. so I'm also I'm in the library of my mind but I'm also like at a deli <laughs> and I'm also you know watching TV and I'm also like watching brain dead TV mm. so I can't quite feel yeah like it's constructive time when you, know? you do watch enough I feel like it you know when you're suggested videos and stuff I think after a while the algorithm starts to know that you're they're like, oh, you really want, and then all your suggested videos are like, yeah, like that was when we were doing the van. Everything was just van, sure. van, 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 and that kind of felt constructive. Otherwise, like you know, I'm very guilty of just opening up YouTube because I want to put on some music, and then mm. like it's like two hours later, I'm like, wait, what? I just watch a like an hour of video on like somebody sent garlic bread into the <laughs> yeah. stratosphere, and then it came down and they ate it, and I was like, that's fucking class. It is class, <laughs> not a. Or you watch some hot ones from like seven years ago, <laughs> being like, "Oh, Sean Evans has you know he's put a lot of muscle since then," you know. Um, well, you know, Killian, uh, much like the van life, I feel like this podcast has run out of road. <laughs> but I want to thank you so much for, uh, and also we're up, we're up on our time. Because mm -hmm. um, that's what I'm doing now. I'm selling tickets, tickets, tickets. Yeah. Uh, so, well, first of all, the the podcast, our podcast, mm -hmm. which. I, it's difficult because we don't know what the name of it is. <laughs> yeah. So just look at my Instagram. You'll find that there'll be a podcast that 
I've been doing, it's been called MK Ultra Fun, but we're going to change the name of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so listen to that. It's uh, film focused, but it's also, I think like, it's wacky chats, you You're know? Wacky. Oh, people will be like, wow, that's wacky. Then I'm doing a show with you in yes. the Omniplex. Yes, we are. We're going to watch The Mummy together. Um, So we're going to be doing that. And then anyone in, um, in Bangor or maybe Belfast, I'm doing a show on the 20th in November, and I really want to sell. Uh, I really want to sell that out and make it a really great show because I'm very excited for it. My roommates from Bangor, and uh, I just I'm excited. I think it's gonna be. There's a lot of really cool comedians are doing it. And oh, I'm that's fun. A great show. So that's great. Please come. It's gonna be wonderful. It's gonna be 45 minutes. Oh, yeah. So uh huh. It'll be all the stuff that I've kind of got so far, including um, your COVID material. Yeah. Well, no. I think <laughs> I'll. I'll nah, Maybe. I'm not going to say anything on. I'm not going to make a statement on Don't this. Don't make a set list now. Because then they were like, uh, he said he wasn't going to do any covered stuff. Hey! <laughs> hey, I thought you said. That's what people sound like a banger. banger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Killian, thank you very much for being on the show. Well, lovely to be here. Thank you so much, Tony. Thank you. All the best. See you later. Yeah, please, bye. Please go. Please yeah. leave. Or you actually want me to. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Don't forget your coat. Is that poop bag in your back? It is, yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs>